Remember this pattern from my haul? The fabric came just two days ago. I'm so excited. This is what I'm going to make it out of. Look at this green, soft, it looks like a cable knit. I'm gonna kind of hold it up over my face. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. It's better than I thought, because you know I ordered it. I and mean, you never know. It looked really great online. I'm gonna put the information for where you can order it um, in the thing below. It came off of Etsy. And that's where I got this, and then I have another piece that I got from them too, and I am beyond pleased. So, we're gonna just go cut this out. I really like all of the views. I think A is too short for me, so I'm gonna do either B or C. Um, I'm not going to do tassels for myself this time. Can you imagine between my cat and my dog, they'd probably pull all those off. B um, looks nice and flat when the arms are down, but it actually has, probably can't see it in the camera, but it has like a shirt tail hem. So it's shorter on the sides and longer. So I like that. I think that, that I, would, I would like that a lot. If you do C, C is straight across. So when your arms are down, it actually gives you the opposite. It makes it look longer at the corners. So I'm just gonna see, I bought, I think two and a half yards of fabric. We'll see how much, which one I can get. If I can, I'm going to do B because I like the, um, that shirt tail hem that creates the straight across illusion if possible. And uh, A doesn't have a neck, uh, collar neckline and B and C both do. I think I'm going to do the neckline, the little collar on it. So we're gonna head over to the cutting table and cut it out. Just a quick reminder, because I don't think I've said it for quite a few videos, I always press my patterns nice and flat before cutting, and if possible, I cut out on the size I'm going to use. If I know I'm going to use it for multiple sizes, I will trace off the size that I'm going to use to preserve the pattern sizes. Have I mentioned how much I love this fabric? It is making my heart happy. I can't even explain it. I'm going to order it in every color, I think. The weight, the hand, everything. Love. This is a directional fabric in that it has this little V and they always face the same direction. Sometimes in a pattern like this, you'll see them flip where the V will go down on this one and up on this one, but this one it doesn't. So you just want to make sure if you have something like that, that you lay out so that the tops are always the same. So on this piece, here's my um, back, and you can see it's just laid out on the fold normally. My front, I flipped over so that the fold is the same um, and the top is the same to keep uh, the, the design of the fabric copacetic. I've cut out my two big pieces. They're right there. Pardon the messes because I am cutting in storage space, soon to be annexed sewing space. But I've refolded this last bit to get the little sleeve cuff bottom out of it and the collar. And the reason I did is this is almost the identical color in my kitchen um, on part of my cabinetry and I have a little seating area in there and I would like to make a little um, pillow cushion to cover a pillow to match. So I was just trying to get just enough so that if I, possible I might get a little cushion out of it. And I did, I think I can get a cushion. So I was being super parsimonious with my fabric so I didn't have to order some more and I could use up my scraps in that way. So sleeve, collar, almost cut out, ready to go So Let's have a quick discussion about how we're going to be putting this together. This has 5 8 inch seam allowances, and you can see they've so, so shown it sewn with 5 8 inch, and then they pressed open their seams. Now, this shoulder seam could totally be surged, and I'm going to. However, everything after that should not be surged. It's going to be just stitched. So I'm going to surge, right now, I'm going to surge this shoulder seam, then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to seam finish all the way around the outer edge. So I'm going to make it flat. It's going to look like a big flat blanket kind of. And I'm going to serge around the edge. Then I will come back and make this little stitch at the sewing machine. If you're not doing the collar, you'll be turning down the collar and just stitching it. If you're going to do the collar, I'm going to sit, stitch that at the serger. Same with this part. I'm going to serge this. And then... This gets sewn on here, so 
Um, this will be pressed open, but I believe I can search this. We'll get When I get there, I'll tell you, but I'm wondering now. And then after that, it's just top stitching. So actually pretty straightforward, other than this little part right here. I'm not 100% sure till I get there and start pinning it. These markings on the side seam are to help you know where to sew up for your little side seam part. And then down here at the bottom, they have all these nice little circles, and that's for if you want to add the tassels. This is for tassel placement along the hemline, if you choose to do it. So here's where I am right now. I need to trim my little thread in the middle where I sewed from shoulder to shoulder. All right, and as always, when working with a soft knit, or any knit, don't stretch. You don't wanna stretch out your neckline or anything else, but look at how this drapes. This just hangs and drapes. The weight, the hand, I'm so in love with this fabric. <laughs> okay, so. I've got my shoulders and I have seam finished all the way around, so I've just surged around the outer edge of the whole thing. And next we can, and it shows on our little directions, sew this little bit of underarm. So there's just like this little seam that's gonna hang down that's about this long. And on the pattern it has two little dots, two little circles, so you find the circles for your size. You make those little markings and we're just gonna do a little straight stitch in that spot, about five to six inches long. It's a short little seam. So we're gonna sew both of those underneath and at the sewing machine. But while I'm, my serger's all set up and I'm ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and sew my collar together. And the collar's easy because all it is is a tube. We're gonna take our little tube, right sides together, 5 8 inch seam allowance, and we're just gonna serge the tube there. It's gonna then fold in half to be sewn on. Now, when we fold it in half, we have options. One way, little V's gonna point up, and the other way, the little V's gonna point down. So when I get ready to sew it on, I wanna make sure that I get my V's going the right direction, or I'll have V's going down on the body and the V's going up on the neck. So you have to kind of pay attention to that. The same with the cuff. So I'm gonna sew my collar together, like this, right sides together, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the little cuff. The cuff is also folded in half, and everything has markings, so don't forget to transfer your little markings. See the little notch right there? We're going to go right sides together this way, and you're gonna sew this little hourglass shape along here, so all along here. So we're gonna sew both of those, and then that will open up in half. So it's a self-faced cuff. We don't have to hem the cuff at all. So I'm gonna sew both of those pieces at my serger, 5 8 inch seam allowance, and then I'll come back and we'll start putting everything together. Surprise, look at the color of threads I'm sewing with. I really like to match as closely as possible as a rule, but this is sort of an unusual sage green, which I don't have, and I'm not going to run all over Tulsa looking for it. So I dug into what I do have, and the gray almost disappears. Look at that, it really does do a good job. I went ahead and stuck the green, which is pretty close, even though it doesn't look like it now. I don't think, I think I'm gonna top stitch in gray and not in green believe it or not, because it just disappears better than the green. I stuck the green on there where the needle goes, which is where the seam is sewn. So here's the seam. So there's a green thread there if it pulls, but I don't think it would matter anyway. I could have done the whole thing in gray. Anyway, just thought I'd let you know. And now I'm just going around the outer edge, seam finishing, make sure you don't pull it all. Notice how it's laying nice and flat and it's not rippling, and that's what we want. So here's our collar. We're just going to fold in half, like so. And this is how it looks. It's not huge, but it will go over the head. It makes a very cute little headband, but that's about the size of the collar. And again, be careful not to stretch it. Um, but that's the collar piece. And again, mark your, it has markings so we can match it up. Now for the sleeve, this is the thing I wanna mention about the sleeve. Um, if you want a tighter cuff at, this, at the wrist, this is the time to do it. So it folds in half on itself like so. And this is about how tight the cuff is gonna be. I'm gonna put my arm in there so you can see. So, ta-da, like that. Now, if you want it tighter, um, now is the time. You come back into your little 
hourglass and you don't want to take anything up here because this is how it fits onto the sleeve that'll change the whole thing but you can change it in here so you could actually come in a little bit tighter this way uh, make sure you do it even top and bottom so that when it folds in half you can have a little bit tighter cuff i'm fine with this um, how it is and it'll still push up if i want to push it up and it will of course fold if you want to fold it it's going to look great folded because it's self-lined so very attractive if you want to fold it too. So now I have my sleeves and my cuff done. I still have not sewn my little spot on the side seam here. So I'm going to flip this around so you can see. Here it is. Here's my side seam. This is just like a big blanket almost. And we have got our pattern piece here. Here's our little side seam. So here's our little marking. Right there. So I'm going to sew this little seam spot right here. You can you can see from the edge to there. So I'm going to sew that on both pieces real quick, and then I will show you how to put in our collar and our sleeves. Now that I've got my little side seam sewn, I've made a decision. I said earlier that I didn't know if I was going to serge in this little sleeve cuff part or sew it at the sewing machine. I'm going to sew it at the sewing machine. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. To the serger and with the two layers together I'm just going to serge around that outer edge to give it a seam finish for both little cuffs real quick and then I can show you how to put in the sleeve and the cuff and they're kind of similar in how they're going to go together after that it's hemming so fast I love this pattern so much I think I'm going to make it a lot here's the collar pinned in I always take the seam and put it at the center back, which is the least noticeable place on me, especially since I have long hair, it always covers that seam anyway. So we either put it at the seam, at the center back marking or on a shoulder seam. That's where you wanna put the seam for the collar. Now my fabric is directional, so I made sure that when it's flipped up, that the little Vs face the same direction that they face on the bodice. So you can see they point down when it's finished. That's how it's going to be. So now I'm just going to serge all the way around this. At 5 eighths, there is a little tiny bit of stretch in the collar. So it very, very little, but it said, it shows on the collar, it says stretch. So it's just a tiny bit of easing in, but not much, especially since it's knit. So don't pull much. You won't need it. Or you're going to have a very stretched out neckline. So I'm going to go ahead and search that in. And then I will show you how to sew in the little sleeve cuff. Showing you the inside, but look, I have a collar. I can tell already I'm going to just live in this thing. So here's my little side seam. I will tell you, um, if you can see, here's how short the little side seam is. So if you're going to wear this like a shirt, which I probably am, you could easily lengthen this seam um, so that you have more coverage because right now it's about, I mean, it comes way down here, but it's only about that long. So easily lengthen this if you want to not in the little part where the sleeve goes on, the little sleeve cuffy part, but down below you can. I also, I don't think I mentioned this until this point, I lengthened the whole thing by two inches. So at the bottom, I cut it another two inches longer. And that's just because I know I'll probably wear it over leggings um, at least part of the time. And I want to make sure it covers all the things I want it to cover. So I added just a little bit extra for that purpose. Now we're going to take our cuffs and I'm doing the same thing. I want to make sure my little V's face the right direction. So this is the right side of my cuff and here's my seam. That's going to line up with the little underarm seam. So I'm, here's my little shirt. I'm opening up the little hole here and you can see here's my side seam. It's just going to be pressed open or full, let it fall, fall open. And I'm going to slide the sleeve down inside that little hole and I'm going to match up that seam with the little underarm side seam part and pin it and then I'm just going to pin the rest of the sleeve around like this and stitch it in on the 5 8 inch line. That's it. That's all it takes to putting in the sleeves. So I'm going to do that for both sleeves. It's a little funky. Um, it'll feel a little funky right here where you're stitching where it comes together at the little underarm side seam part but it's at, and your directions have good directions as far as the um, pattern goes so it's it's really straightforward we're just going to sew around that circle 
at the sewing machine. Now I'm, I'm just doing a straight stitch. You can see where it is on the arm and it's way down here on my arm. So it's, I've got plenty of room. If it's tighter on you, if you're shaped differently, if you have a fuller forearm, if it feels tighter for you, you may want to use a zigzag just to keep from having popped stitches, but I'm not a bit concerned about it with this. So I'm going to put in both sleeves and then we're going to come back and put the hem in and I'm going to try it on. For underarm here where I'm putting in the sleeve, I just want you to see, it's hard to see, I know this. Right here is where my seam ends, and that's where the seam of the garment, of the bodice ends, and that's where I've lined up the seam of the sleeve. So they are kind of lined up with each other. So I folded up my seam allowance, and I'm actually gonna start stitching right where the side seam finishes. So I'm gonna start stitching here, I'm gonna sink my needle here, and I'm gonna sew all the way around, and I'm gonna stop on the other side in the same spot and what happens is it magically fits without giving me a little hole. It's pretty easy to sew this and accidentally end up with a little hole right where those two things meet and this prevents it and will also prevent you from getting a little pleat. So you don't want a hole or a pleat in that spot and this is how I do it. So I just went around the sleeve and I just want you to see this is how it ends up under the arm and there's no pleat. It looks great. Here's the little cuffy part. And here's the little side seam, and you can see how short that side seam is and how much is open. So before I hem this, I'm going to slip it on real quick and see if I want this sewn up a little bit more um, before I put the hem in. Time to hem, and it's 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around, so we're just going to be folding up our 5 8 inch and stitching. And you can either do a little mitered corner here at the corners of the sides where the side seam and the hem meet, or if it's me, if I, I prefer to do the bottom hem first and then do the side seam, and that just gives a cleaner look at the side. I'm gonna just do my top stitched hem all the way around. All right, I'm coming up the side. Here's the bottom hem, here's my side seam. Now we have 5 eighths of an inch back here. So I'm sewing on the half inch line because there's 5 eighths inch seam allowance. So that ensures that I stay on my seam allowance. When you get up here, um, you have a couple options. You can come up, pivot at the half inch, come across and back down, and that gives you a nice even look. Or you can come kind of right in line with where the seam starts. Um, sink your needle and then come up at an angle so you have sort of a little arrow. Either of those would work great and look nice and finished um, to just give you a, a more professional looking seam here for your top stitching. All right, there's my little corner. It's a little hard to see, but you can see that's the how it's finished inside and out. Now to try it on. A neighbor is playing either a tuba or a sousaphone. <laughs> Someone must belong to the band around here. It's also like 32 degrees outside. It must be pretty bad in the house if mom and dad kicked them outside to play their tuba. I can't see them, but I sure can hear them. <laughs> so we'll see if it shows up in the camera or not. All right, I'm gonna step back. So you can see how this looks. This could easily fold down. Oh, I'm really, really loving this fabric. I can see making lots of things out of it. Okay, I'm gonna step back and let you see how this looks. Now remember, the only thing I did differently was I added two inches in length and I sewed up the side seam a little more. I didn't do with quite as short of a seam as they had. I have less of a vent and more of a seam. So let me step back and show you how this thing looks. I think I probably could have tightened up the cuff a little bit for me. It looks cute though, and I don't mind it at all. And it's cute even folded up. So I'm gonna fold up the sleeve a little bit so you can see. So this is how it looks. I think the tassels would be really cute if you wanna do a tassel or a pom-pom or something on the bottom. But it's just a bit you're wearing a blanket with the sleeve in a collar. <laughs> it's an almost, um, what were those snuggies? What were those things they used to make that were like a backwards robe? That's kind of, it's not quite that, but uh, boy, this is something I can see living in. Would be great to throw over anything, like just to throw over and wear out as a little over jacket too. Oh, I love it. I really, really like it. Final thoughts on this is very fast, very easy, very cute, very trendy, very, 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 I like it. I am definitely um, want to try it again. I say go for it, try it. Cute, easy, fun, fast, great little weekend project. See you next week for another fun video.